Today we're going to cover how to make sample drill beats. I'm going to show you multiple sampling techniques, tips on sound selection, drum pattern help, 808 tips, and a lot more. So let's get into it. To make the style of orchestral dark drill, finding the right sample can make a big difference, which can be hard. So let me show you one helpful tip right away for this. But before I do, I have one hilarious joke to tell you. Guys, after I flip this orchestral sample into a beat, I'm gonna go from Beethoven to Beethoven. I changed, I changed the E to an A. So now it has, it has the word beat in it now. This guy stinks! All right, never mind. So when you're looking for a sample, finding one that has a bit more movement can make your job easier. One of the mistakes that producers might make is they might start with a sample like this one here. While there's nothing wrong with this sample per se, and it might provide a great foundation for your beat, you'll notice that this sample doesn't have much movement. It has these really long sustained notes that stay the same. Now let's compare this to this sample here. Now while this sample does have those sustained notes, it also has that downwards riff that has a lot more movement to it. And the reason why this is useful for drill is because often drill beats are structured in a way where you have a lot happening in the beginning and the end of your loop with your drum and 808 patterns. Whereas the middle of the loop is usually more open. So to keep my beat interesting, my plan is going to be to use that part of my sample that has a bit more movement during the middle part where the loop opens up. So that's the game plan. Before I start chopping the sample up, guys, leave a comment down below. How about you share a hilarious joke that you might've heard recently? I don't know, maybe something like this. I won't tell you what to do. All right, let's start chopping the sample up. I think this part of my sample sounds perfect for the beginning of my loop. So this is one chop that I'll use. Then like I mentioned, I'm gonna use that piece that has a bit more movement for my next chop. So these two pieces would work perfectly together. Let's go ahead and program this into the piano roll. So it looks like we have a problem. My first chop here is just not long enough. Some guy starts hooting and hollering during the sample. So what I'm gonna do is stretch this chop out so it lasts longer. So I'm gonna bring this down to minus 40%. This is exactly why in almost every single one of my sampling videos, I recommend using an actual sampler instead of chopping up your sample manually in the playlist. It just allows you to do so much more. I made a video on this exact topic and it should be showing up in the corner. I'd really recommend checking it out if you need help at sampling better. All right, so far in our loop, we have a more sustained note then we have our cool riff. Instead of just repeating this exact same thing over and over again, I'm gonna try to find other chops to use to keep this loop from sounding repetitious. So let's find another sustain note in the sample. So this chop is perfect to me. It's that same sustain note, but it has an additional layer on top, making it sound different enough from my first chop, which will help add some variation to my loop. And now for the riff, I would prefer to use something different than just using this exact same chop once again. But unfortunately, this riff only shows up one time in this entire sample. So what I'm going to do is use the exact same riff, but I'm going to speed it up to almost double. That will make this sound like a different chop altogether. So by using these stretching tricks, it sounds like this is a four bar loop instead of a two bar loop. This was all made easier by using an actual sampler. And one additional benefit of using a sampler that I haven't talked about is using the attack and release knobs that a lot of samplers provide. And this is especially helpful when using orchestral samples. It can sort of sound strange if you have your chop suddenly end, it just doesn't sound natural. But if we increase the attack a little bit and also increase the stain a little bit more, our chops slowly bleed into one another and we don't get any abrupt sounding chops. Just an extra tip that you can think about if you ever use these kinds of samples and you want it to sound more natural. This loop is sounding good to me so far, but it does feel like the sample is a bit narrow and mono sounding, and I want the sample to take up a bit more space in the beat. So I'm gonna use some chorus to help it take up more room. 
So this sounds good so far, but I am worried about the timing of my actual notes in my sample. It's hard to hear whether they're on time without something rhythmic playing alongside my loop. So I may as well start working on my drum pattern. Overall, one thing with drill in comparison to other subgenres is that many of the sounds reside in a higher frequency spectrum and the drum sounds are a lot more transient. So using a dirtier, more prolonged sound like this might not fit into the drill aesthetic, but something like this on the other hand, this sits more in the higher frequencies and is far more transient, so this might be a better fit. Now let's come up with a hi-hat pattern. As you probably know, drill has a very particular unique rhythm compared to other subgenres. And to build this pattern into your beat, lay down your first note, then count three, three, two. So it's gonna be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Then just repeat this over and over again. Three, three, two, that's all you need to remember. I do want to point out this is in double time, so if I was making a beat in single time, which would be 67 BPM in this example, I could actually do the exact same thing. Then once I had this 332 pattern built, I would take everything in my pattern here and just squish it into half the space. Just a tip for all my single time beat makers like me. At this point, I think it would be a good idea to add a few additional ghost notes into my pattern. It's entirely up to you what you want to do here and how many ghost notes you want to add. I'm also going to play with the velocities to help introduce a little bit more variation. This sounds alright to me, but I'm not entirely happy with the hi-hat itself. I think it would sound better if I layered another hi-hat underneath it. So what I'm going to do is use one of these sounds from Jay Cactus' free drum kit. For those of you interested in making drill beats, his channel is great, so I would highly recommend checking it out. I like the attack of this hi-hat, so what I'm going to do is copy and paste my pattern over. And I think it might be a cool idea to just keep this pattern at a basic 3-3-2. So I'm going to delete the ghost notes from this hi-hat layer for no other reason than to just help create some variation. Our ghost notes just sound different than our bass hi-hats now. Another common drill technique is to use hi-hat rolls, so I'll grab yet another hi-hat here. And to create a roll, I'm just going to extend this note for however long I want the roll to last. Then I'm going to hit Alt and U to bring up the chopper. That's entirely up to me how rolly I want this roll. And one bonus tip that I want to point out is that the FL chopper works on the default grid. So let's say I wanted to chop this roll into triplets. So if I set my grid to third beat, and then I open up my chopper once again, you'll notice that it chops as if it's still in the default grid. So if you want to create a roll that's in thirds, here's what you can do. Once you have your grid set into thirds, just write in how many hi-hats you want in your roll. And then use the same pattern stretch feature that I showed you before to just squish your notes into the space that you want them to be in. I'm happy with this hi-hat pattern, so let's move on to the snare pattern next. Like I mentioned, drill drums are a bit more high frequency and transient. So if you don't have these types of drums on your computer, I don't know, maybe you like making beats at the public library, but they refuse to give you internet access after the last time you searched for waifu body pillows for four hours straight. That sounds about right for my audience. So if you're in this situation and you can't download any drum kits, you can try to pitch your drums up a bit and see if that helps. So here I have this snare that feels like it has a bit too much body in those lower frequencies. So what I can do is pitch this up. By the way, keeping the stretch mode to resample will be a good idea here. If you use stretch for example, it will prolong the snare to its original length even if you play it at different pitches. And again for drill, very transient sounds are more common so making our drums sound shorter fits into what we're trying to do here. Next I'm going to take my snare and EQ a bit of that body out. For those of you that watched my recent video on how to improve your drum sounds, you know how important this frequency area down here is. While the snare is sounding better, it is lacking a bit of that high-end crack, so what I'm going to do is grab yet another snare from my library. Alright, perfect. This sounds very drillish to me. So when it comes to the snare pattern, the common idea for drill is to put the snare on the third beat, exactly like we have here, one, two, three. But instead of putting the next snare on the seventh beat, like you would for trap, we will be moving the snare. Commonly, this goes on the eighth beat like so. 
But again, feel free to play with where this snare lands and where the additional snares can go. For my next bar, I'm going to add this additional snare here just to create some variation. And it sounds like we have a good snare pattern. Next, let's move on to our kick. Like I mentioned with drill patterns, they have more activity in the beginning and the end of the loop and are commonly more open in the middle. And so this is going to be my approach with my kick pattern. All right, this kick pattern works. Next, I'm going to add in my 808. So let's start by figuring out what the root note of my sample is and then choose the right 808 from there. I'm going to do this by using Wave Candy. This is one of the most powerful tools in FL Studio. If you don't know about it, watch the video in the corner after you watch this one. I use this all the time in my beats. All right, so it looks like we need a C sharp. So here's a helpful tip when choosing 808s. You probably have a big library of 808s that are tuned to many different keys. But when you're looking through your library, I would recommend not bothering to listen to the 808s that are far away from the key that you're looking for. And the reason is that even though that 808 might sound great in isolation, once you bring it into your beat and you retune it to fit whatever you're making, you might end up shifting your 808 something like six semitones. And at that point, it might not sound great. Often 808s are built to sound more optimized near the key that they were built in. So when I look for 808s, I'll listen to the ones that are maybe one or two semitones within the key that I'm looking for. Right, this sounds pretty good to me. It has a good level of distortion, so I'm going to use this 808 here. Now for my 808 pattern, I want to create an actual progression. You saw with the sample, it was just one flat consistent note in the low end. And if I followed this when I built my 808 pattern, my beat would just sound very monotone. So for the next 808 note, let's bring this down five semitones to create an actual progression. And now let's finally create the drill slides with my 808 pattern here. Personally, I find this somewhat irritating when producers go overboard with their slides, so I'm going to be a bit more conservative with my slide pattern. Step one here is to just create an 808 riff at the end of my pattern. Then I'll add a few slides in. And then finally, I'm going to experiment and bring some of these notes up an octave while keeping others close to their natural pitch. Again, I could bring all these notes up an octave and get real wild, but I'll end up annoying myself. But it's entirely up to you how many of these notes you want to move up though. Right, this beat feels like it's alright so far, but it does feel like something is missing in those low mid frequencies. It needs more body. So I think it might be a good idea to use a string sound to fill up that space. It will fit with the aesthetic of this beat since we're using an orchestral sample, and I'll also do a good job of making this beat feel a lot more complete. So I'm going to go into complete and look at the bowed string section. Lots of plugins have strings or bowed string presets in case you need sounds similar to these. And now I'm just going to follow my 808 patterns progression and this will really help fill up that missing space and make this beat feel a lot more complete. Awesome, now I'm going to add the smaller details into this beat, the little effects and percussive sounds throughout. With drill beats, they use a lot of impact sounds to fill up space, the types of sounds that have a large attack and then quickly fade out. I know a lot of drill beats like to use gun sound effects. Personally, I do not condone violence. And if it were up to me, drill beats would use sounds like butterfly wings flapping and children smiling. But let's go ahead and add these smaller sounds into my beat just to add more detail. All right, so I think we have a full loop at this point. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I've done with the arrangement. For the hook, I added even more impact sounds to really bring up the energy level. I also added this sound here to create a basic melody on top.
That Melody sound is from Scorch. I have been using this more and more recently. It has some really great sounds in it, so check it out if you're in need of a new plugin. After my hook, I created this section of the beat where things really minimized, and I used halftime to really alter the beat in this section. <laughs> I just enjoyed this part of the beat. Anyways, I'm gonna play the full beat for you in case you wanna take a listen. If not though, I really recommend checking out that video that I made on sampling. I know sampling can be really tough when you start out, but that video is really gonna help you understand the progressions that you can take in order to improve. It should be showing up on the screen right now and I'll link it in the description box below along with all the other videos that I mentioned during this one. By the way, head over to betterbeatmaker.com if you're interested in checking out my full online beat making course. My free drum kit's available in the description box below as well. And if you wanna join my producer community, the link to that is down there too. Anyways, here's the full beat. <laughs> 